What is artificial intelligence? And then especially, how does the Pentagon define it? There's now a Maven smart system for intelligence analysis. This is where AI really helps to uh, speed up this analysis and to actually fuse this data and get uh, actionable insights from this data. So artificial intelligence is very much a buzzword, not just in the Pentagon, but across the world right now. I mean, you can't open your computer without being bombarded with a new AI system or an ad that you see on the side of the bus. Josh, we're going to start with you with a very simple question, I think. Uh, what is artificial intelligence? And then especially, how does the Pentagon define it? So I think this has been a difficult question for people to answer for a while now. I will say, with respect to the department, this is primarily something that people are talking about with respect to machines that can perform tasks that usually require human intelligence. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty broad definition, and I would argue that most academics would probably disagree or try to adjust it a little bit. But really what we're talking about are systems that are capable of sort of perceiving an environment, making recommendations, making decisions, and sort of taking actions on their own, um, whether in real space or in cyberspace. Mm -hmm. Um, this is something that's been changing with time. There's sort of a bit of a maxim that people like to use half jokingly, which is everything is AI until it gets adopted and then it's not AI. <laughs> Once it's unexciting, then it's not AI. Yeah. Um, and I think we've seen that over the last several years. But really, even though we have this sort of comprehensive definition, I think what we've seen is that folks are very, very interested specifically in these machine learning systems, these systems that learn from data over time and develop these sort of statistical understandings of the world. That's really what's been grabbing the department's attention. But there, there's a whole spectrum, right, of things that people sort of mush together in popular culture, right? On, on one side of the spectrum, there are drones, like the Predator, like the first person view drones used so famously in Ukraine. Those aren't actually AI. Those aren't even robots in the classical sense. Those are remotely controlled airplanes, right? With the first person view drones, there's literally a dude sitting there with VR goggles and joysticks flying the thing as if he were in it. So that gets mistaken for AI, but it's not AI. There are attempts to build autonomy or forms of AI into vehicles that can navigate on the ground or in the air. And they're still mostly experimental because it turns out that what we humans think is simple, like walking through a door without hitting the door jam is actually really hard and took hundreds of millions of years of evolution to get those algorithms working in our brains. Uh, robots are much better, computers are much better at dealing with just numbers, which is what we find hard as humans. Uh, that's what they find easy. Uh, and AI in the modern sense is neural nets, which are inspired by the human brain, but very, very crude sort of 1916s conception of it, that basically do a whole bunch of math on data. They find correlations and they spit back, you know, answers of, you know, given this pattern, this is a match, this isn't a match. A large language model, or LLM, applies that same kind of math to language. It takes vast sets uh, of text and turns everything into tokens, which are abstract numerical representations of words, finds mathematical patterns and spits back pattern matching. And that's all your chatbots are doing. They don't have a brain, they don't have an, any idea that these words represent things in physical reality. Uh, they just know that these tokens happen to come together in certain patterns and it statistically likely that whatever they're giving you could have appeared as human text somewhere. Kate, given all of that, in your mind, is AI in use in the military right now? Or is it still kind of a, we're trying to get there? You know, experts still uh, have these discussions. For example, is computer vision is considered AI or it's not AI, it's mm -hmm. not fancy anymore, so we don't consider it AI. But still, computer vision models help to 
recognize the objects, to classify the objects, and to actually facilitate target recognition and target acquisition. And this is where AI is really helpful. Sometimes you cannot see the tank which is camouflaged somewhere in the forest, or you, can, you cannot see the mines hidden uh, in the field, for example. And this is where AI and computer vision models really help. Uh, the second application is AI-enabled navigation, so autonomous navigation, where, uh, again, perceiving the environment, AI helps to control the drone, control its flight, uh, flight uh, to avoid obstacles, to plan path, and to actually bring the drone to the target, or at least to the square where the possible target is. Mm. So, in practice, uh, if we combine all this features together, we might actually have a fully autonomous system, but as Sydney has mentioned, it's not perfect yet, so we cannot fully rely on it, and we cannot delegate decision-making stage. It's In my mind, it's kind of the next level, decision AI-enabled decision-making. Uh, so the military doesn't um, rely on AI specifically in decision-making. That enhances some features and some functions uh, of drones which help the drones to navigate in the battlefield. Um, and the second big bucket of AI applications for me and in my mind from what I see is basically analytics. Uh, as Sydney has mentioned, we people cannot uh, process a lot of information, such huge amount of information and data that modern military acquires through various sensors. Mm. And this might be text information, for example, intercepted communications of your enemy. Uh, this might be acoustic information from microphones installed along the front line. Uh, this might be, again, drone footage. So it's videos and photos and pictures. And for human analysts to go through this hours of intercepted communication, sure. drone footage, etc., it's really sometimes impossible. So this is where AI really helps to uh, speed up this analysis and to actually fuse this data and get uh, actionable insights from this data. Josh, specific to the Pentagon, where do you think the department is right now in, in regards to what Kate's talking about? I mean, everyone's talking about AI, but we all know there are buzzwords that come by. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the metaverse three years ago uh, and then never kind of actually get adopted. So how do you feel the Pentagon is doing at getting into these things? Yeah, that's a great question. So if we're thinking about specific applications that the, the Pentagon is sort of excelled at or at least is attempting to speed up adoption on, um, precisely to Kate's point, I think the computer vision applications we've seen over the last several years, especially with all of the hay that Project Maven made several years ago, that's really one indicator that that's uh, one application of artificial intelligence that's gotten increasing adoption sort of across the department, across the services. Also a little bit to what I believe both Sydney and Kate were talking about, the sort of business functions piece. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the Pentagon's pretty willing right now to do these pilots with something like SentGPT and CentCom, or acquiring some of these systems like the um, AI platform from Palantir that are examples of systems that can sort of speed up these more business process or sort of analytic elements of the work. Um, where I think they want to go longer term, and especially if we're thinking about things like CCAs, if we're thinking about various kinds of UXVs, is they want to eventually start integrating these more advanced, essentially AI agents into these systems. They want them to have the ability to actually do decision making in context. That's a much longer term goal. Um, but I think for now, they've focused a lot more on what are the tasks that we can sort of make easier for warfighters, especially on the back end. Now, to follow up on what you said about Maven, actually, that original Project Maven, which started out as basically, we have all this drone video from the War on Terror. How do we find, again, which is what these AIRs are good are for, patterns in this that might indicate, oh, this is a, a terrorist, this is a civilian, this is a target, this is not a target. That has that gave rise to the Joint AI Center, which is the root of the current Chief Digital AI Office, and came through the central thread. There's now a Maven smart system for intelligence analysis that's widely used at military headquarters, not just for imagery analysis, but for all sorts of intelligence. I think that including the signals intelligence uh, that Kate mentioned, although again, lots of that's classified, so I'm not supposed to know the answers. Sure. And there's also a NGA Maven run by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency that has carried on simply imagery analysis portion of it. 
Uh, so from that one single prod product uh, and project, there's a great deal, you know, thousands upon thousands of users, high demand uh, for AI functions. But again, it's very much back office. It's very much about these masses of data, right, that Kate mentioned, going through those. It's not so much about operating physically in the physical world. So to sum up, right now at the DoD, and let's say broadly speaking, militaries, everyone's kind of diving in, finding uses for it, for back office analysis, that kind of work. The goal is in the future to get to that point where it's making more decisions at a strategic or tactical level, kind of on its own with, as you know, hopefully the man in the loop question of somebody who's actually got the trigger remains human. Do you guys believe uh, we're going to get there in the next couple of years, or is this a long-term question? I think definitely the agentic piece is a more long-term question. I will tell you, speaking to folks in industry, they really have this idea that's that that's sort of the next step, that we're going to move past or even p potentially skip over these sort of rules-based autonomous systems, one that essentially carry these if-then rules about how they're going to behave in an environment, and that we're going to pretty swiftly move to these agentic systems that might actually be powered by something like an LLM for planning. Mm -hmm. I think that seems kind of unrealistic in, in sort of the near term, especially because of how difficult it is to assure those systems to do test and evaluation, to do all of the sort of measurement and evaluation you would want to do before actually deploying those systems. I think in the nearer term, what we're more likely to see is these sort of rule-based systems that are able to sort of interpret the environment and then have a pretty strict set of steps that they take to respond to whatever they see.